So good morning everyone and this is uh, day one of the three week lockdown that we've got in the UK. Okay, and obviously this means we're not allowed to leave the house, we're not allowed to do anything outside pretty much other than the essential, which is shopping, well, food shopping, essential food shopping, not just shopping. And also exercise, I think we're allowed an hour a day outside for exercise, but being a professional footballer, obviously being a professional athlete, it's important that we keep ourselves fit in this moment in time. And it's quite easy to fall off the bandwagon and sort of stop all the habits that you've created by sort of external factors and using external factors as an excuse. So one of the main things I like to do is as soon as I get up, I'd like to put my gym gear on because it's just one of those tiny little things that once you're wearing your gym gear, it's much easier to do exercise. Now we've got an action-packed filled day today because my training routine, obviously, as I said, can't really stop because I have to maintain my fitness and it's my favorite day today and it's leg day. Now, I'm lucky that I've got gym equipment and my sort of the landlords of this property have left their gym stuff here so I can go up to, I think, 80, 85 kilos in terms of weight, I've got a proper barbell, a squat rack and so on, which I'll be showing you later on. But yeah, so that's quite good. And I've also got a big, big enough gardens and a decent sized sort of area here where I can do my exercises. And the plan is to do sort of a bit of a heavy leg day, mixing in squats with deadlifts, with uh, RDLs, with Nordics. I'm, I'm going to be explaining all of this once I'm outside. But I also like to start my days off with a nice big coffee. And this is my special brew, which is sort of a form of a bulletproof coffee. Powder, and it just goes into this big blender and it's, just, it's the big one, the 650 ml one. And I also take magnesium, which I've already taken and water. Yeah, that's sort of my morning routine, but I just wanted to sort of touch on the gym gear because as I said, it's quite easy to just miss a couple of days worth of training. One of the things I forgot to mention was that I like to do my workouts fasted and that's because I want to obviously increase my ketone production because they are muscle sparing. I know insulin's important as well, but you've also got leucine, which I think a lot of people don't realize that leucine obviously helps with protein synthesis as well. So yeah, that's just something that I wanted to point out there. And I always do my workouts fasted, whether that's football, whether that's just doing my own home workouts or doing my own run. And I feel absolutely brilliant because you've essentially got unlimited exercise. And I don't know if you've watched my Instagram story yesterday, but I talked about sort of the book by Jeff Follick and Steve Finney where they talk about the art and science of low carbohydrate performance and one of the things they obviously talk about is being able to do exercise once you're fat adapted and actually having an improved sort of output I guess and you actually can be the same level of fitness but because you're fat adapted your body uses fuels differently which means it doesn't get as tired as quickly so your breathing slows down your lactate production slows down which means you can essentially go for longer and being fat adapted is very very important to me and it just allows me to do an extra set say or you know run that extra mile or whatever it is i want to do and especially in football that's obviously very important to stay on top of your games So this is usually my warm-up glutes, generally targeting the glutes just before I start doing my squats, obviously. So yeah, this is my warm-up and now I'm gonna go and jump onto the skipping rope, uh, no pun intended, and do a little bit of skipping on this one. A 
Well, I'll tell you what, that went better than I thought because usually, because of my ACL replacement on my right, I usually struggle to jump and that usually activates doing skipping ropes and stuff activates my knee a little bit more because the patella right across the front gets a bit stiff. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with a one take. Let's get on with this session, shall we? So this is set number one at 90 kilos. Nothing really else to say, but set number one at 90 kgs. Six sets to come. Set number one done. A um, few pointers that I like to make is I like to point my feet slightly outwards and be shoulder width apart, which is sort of something that I'm always trying to do. I'm also trying to get good depth and when I'm driving up, I try and squeeze my groins apart and then drive up that way. Now, I'm not sure how that looks on camera, but in my head, it makes sense. But also rest is important. That's why I've got this timer next to me and I tend to leave two minutes in between each set. So yeah, set number one done, two minutes now. So set number two complete. Something I also like to point out is I like to squat with a low bar, which means I have my hands really far apart, which means the bar sits much lower rather than having my hands narrow, which means I'm sort of tensing up. Don't know why, but I always have liked having my hands quite far apart. Also, whoever said this isn't hard or who thinks you need to be sweating your tits off in the gym, absolutely not. This lasts about 45 seconds a set of 10, so yeah. Good workout, it's almost like a hit session in a way. Oh, leg session's done. Well, quads are done, uh, literally as well. Six sets of 10, it's slightly adapted version of Jim Wendler's um, 531 boring but big workout where you obviously do six heavy sets, well, three heavy sets with the three warm up sets, and then you do 50, so five times 10 reps at 50% of your one rep max. This is just over well from rep max at one head. What's this? 90 kilos. So my one rep max is about 170. Um, but obviously I haven't got the ability to do the heavy set. So I ended up doing a bit more that way. I ended up doing six sets of 10. It's onto deadlifts now. Bulgarian split squats coming. And then I need to see whether my partner will help me with Nordics or when I'm just gonna have to do RDLs. But yeah, that's uh, squats done. And as I said, if people think that this is, you know, pretty easy going to the gym and you need to be sweating to really build up your, or lose body fat or whatever. No, make sure you do this as well. Obviously running's good for you. I'm not a big proponent because obviously I'm a goalkeeper. That's sort of one of the reasons why I'm a goalkeeper because I don't like running. But yeah, just um, something to keep in mind. I'm actually sweating right now and I'm outside and it's probably seven, eight degrees outside. So you will get a good blow on. The important thing is as well, you don't want to be training above your 70% um, max if you are looking to do to build sort of your mitochondria up and sort of burn more fat because anything above 70% of your max heart rate will not burn any fat or fat. Well, fat oxidation is around about 70%. So this is well below 70%. So I'm actually burning fat as I'm doing this and also building muscle. So just something to keep in mind and that's why I'm sort of not a big proponent of HIIT sessions. They're, they have their time and place depending on what it is you're training, but if you're looking to just burn body fat and sort of maintain, these sessions are ideal. But anyway, on to the deadlifts now. So as my deadlift's done, six sets of 10 at 90 kgs. Just a little burn at the end now to finish, which will be five sets of five of remaining deadlifts. So essentially grab the bar similar to a deadlift, but you're not squatting down. You are just extending your hamstrings, basically. That's what it is. And also Bulgarian split squats, but they're gonna be a super set. So I'm gonna do one set of um, RDLs. I'm gonna do one set of split squats. I'm gonna do Six each side on a split squat with probably a five kg weight in my hand. It's just to finish it off. It's just to finish the burn off. And it's gonna be trying to be a bit more explosive with the Bulgarian split squats. 
I might incorporate a slightly different version, which is with a jump at the end. So you squat and then you drive up and we'll see how my legs feel after that. But yeah, last set of five, five sets of five and then six on each leg on the Bulgarian split squat. So let's get on with it. Romanian deadlifts done, Bulgarian split squats done. Now I'm gonna have a Polish rest for two minutes. So that's the session officially done. Um, it wasn't an easy one, but I also think that I felt a bit more tired just because we've not really done anything obviously last week with coronavirus, having suspended the football season and so on. Um, it's an interesting one because I really enjoy these types of sessions because you only went and tend to work for a short period of time, but you work at sort of quite a high intensity or relatively high intensity. For me, it's important to do these types of sessions because my ACL has been replaced. So the more load I can take off the ACL, the more the, the better it's going to be for my career and the, the, the longer it's going to, or the more it's going to prolong my career if I can take load off the ACL because essentially the ACL needs strong hamstrings and quads and that's what's very important, hence why I like doing these sorts of sessions. The normal run that I'm asked to do is about 25 minutes worth of work. So it's 5K, that's roughly what a goalkeeper covers. There's a nice little lap where I live, where I can do sort of a 5K. Would I rather do that for the sake of 25 minutes? Yeah, of course, but do I feel better doing this sort of stuff where I'm in the gym and, and doing weights and so on and I can really feel the burn? Yeah, sort of psychologically I feel better. Yes, it's an hour versus 25 minutes and you know, sometimes you have to weigh that up and you don't always have the opportunity to, to do an hour long session like I have today. Sometimes if it's raining, you'd rather just do you know, 25 minutes outside. I've got an upper session to come on Thursday, which I'm obviously looking forward to and I'm just gonna have to structure that in with my runs as well because that was important to maintain my fitness. Now moving on from here, where do I go food wise? I'm probably still, it's only quite early, it's only about quarter to 10 at this moment in time. So food wise, I'll probably eat around lunchtime, depending on how I feel. Um, I'm also gonna try and cut down on coffee because it's just not that, I mean, I don't really see any difference anymore of having too much coffee. I used to drink it for the sake of it. I used to put butter in and then once you learn about the sort of the protein to energy ratio, which is the PE ratio that Ella Bruce talks about, a lot more things start to make sense. Now, I don't know if you watch my Instagram story, but I'm also reading um, Jeff Bollock and Dr. Steve Finney's book about low carbohydrate performance. And again, this has made me think even more about sort of being low carb and making sure I've got the right protein to energy to energy or fat in this case, because protein is the building blocks, uh, fats, the energy, obviously saturated fats, the good, the right type of fat. But yeah, just um, my thoughts sort of after this session and I like these types of sessions because you always end up feeling really good and that's sort of one of the main benefits as well of exercise is it gets addictive and you end up having this sort of buzz straight afterwards and you feel like you're gonna you know beat the world now and it's only what quarter to ten ten o'clock something like that and I'm already feeling a million dollars but yeah my two cents now I'm off to a shower offload all the footage and then sort of try and put something nice together so I finished my work about an hour ago and I felt hungry, so I made some food and I know I keep harping on about the PE ratio, but I am starting to get the hang of this. And as, as I keep saying about Ella Bruce, because she's made a very good point about sort of where you want to be when it comes to sort of maintaining muscle mass and gaining muscle mass, but losing body fat. And she sort of said you want to be between two and three to one. So two, two grams protein, to one gram fat up to sort of three grams protein to one gram fat. And I've made this little meal here, which is lean, uh, 500 grams, 5% mint, and 20 grams of Kerrygold, which works out at 3.5 to one PE ratio. So I'm pretty pleased with that. And um, that could be my staple lunch from now on. But yeah, just a quick update after the workout. So it's about an hour, hour and 15 after I've just done my session. So thanks very much for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this little video where I sort of go through my workout routine and so on. 
Um, ever since I've recorded the actual workout vlog, we've actually now been asked to join Strava from the club perspective. And that sort of made me think that that could be a nice little thing where you create a little group or a little club on Strava and have all your friends join and then you share your progress or you have to sort of complete so many workouts and so many running sessions and so on. Um, and therefore they get uploaded to Strava and that means you can then sort of keep track of making sure you exercise. And it just, I guess, holds you a little bit accountable for this sort of stuff as well, because as I said, it's quite easy to sort of, um, you know, create new habits, I guess, of just being at home and, and, and doing less than you used to doing. I'm not gonna say it's lazy because I understand what it's like that once you get comfortable at home, you know, you're just not gonna leave the house as often. But yeah, it might be something to think about that like you create a little group, a little Strava group or something like that and then you just hold yourselves accountable because that way you're still in touch with your friends and you're still doing exercise but without obviously you know coming in contact with other people but yeah just a quick one sort of just as I said going over my routine and so on but thanks very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed this slightly different video please don't forget to subscribe and like the video it obviously means a lot to me because this content that I'm trying to create is all for you guys also make sure you check out my subreddit low carb athlete as well as my Facebook group with the same name and all the links to this as well as my social media channels both my Instagram and my Twitter will be in the description below so thanks for watching once again and I catch you in the next one. Bye for now.